Hello there. Welcome to another episode of Next Meridian Expedition. I hope you are all doing well. A few of you have asked which apps we've been using, especially for GPS and finding uh, wild camping. And uh, I want to go in a bit more depth in that, but I'm going to show you more or less actually all of the apps that we use uh, during this, uh, this world tour. Um, I'm using a Apple phone. So these are apps that are available on Apple. I'm sure they're available on Android as well, but just in case you have an Android and you can't find the app, then I'm sorry, I don't know how to help. Um, but everything here is what I'm using on an Apple phone. I'm gonna show you all the different apps I use. Uh, we have some which we share with Mathilde and some that I personally use. So let's go through it. And of course, the idea here is for me to give you guys all the apps we use. I'm not in a partnership with any of them. Uh, this will be a complete uh, personal feedback and uh, of course if you have any questions or comments leave them in the in the comment section below and i'll get back to you um, also we have some apps which are free some apps which we paid for but we do not have any recurring payment apps so for example there's an app called map out which i used uh, i paid once only to activate it but then after that i never paid we don't have any paying apps because during this trip, it's important for us to not have any costs during the trip, I mean, recurring costs. So we prefer looking for apps which you are free or we just pay once so that we can keep it. Uh, all right, so let's go through it. Okay, so I'm using an Apple phone, just like you can see. Technically, um, they should all be also available on Android, but in case they're not, maybe that's why. Anyway, so on this first homepage here, there's no specific app to our world tour these are just uh, normal apps that everybody or most of you guys use the ones that we use are in here so this is for the navigation uh, here i only use uh, map out google maps and Waze. Uh, apple maps i actually don't use and uh, this one here is for canada which we haven't arrived to yet but in canada i was told that this is a good uh, mapping system so i'm going to check it out but i haven't tested it yet so i don't know I'm going to talk simply about uh, Google Maps, Map Out, and Waze. Waze, I use it when I'm driving uh, because it gives me where the police is, the radar, the speed. Uh, it helps mostly in that sense, just to make sure we don't get tickets and that we are aware of everything. If there's an accident, I, I just feel like it works better than Google Maps. But that's just my personal opinion. Map Out, we use for off-roading. Uh, and Google Maps, well, you guys all know what it's for. But I use Google Maps in this way, and then I'll show you how I use Map Out behind. So for example, what you see is here we have tons of pins actually uh, all around the world. These are all landmarks or places we want to visit. So all the yellow ones are places we want to visit. All the green ones are places that we uh, either slept at. So green means bivouac, it means restaurant, it means groceries, uh, it means camping. Uh, maybe a fuel station. It's all the things aside from landmarks. And the hearts, which you can see, for example, here, these are people's places that we've stayed at or friends or family so that it's easy for us to understand which pin is what. So I'm just going to take, for example, this uh, yellow pin. Oops. So this yellow pin here is the Atlantic Road Ocean that we crossed when we were in Norway. Uh, the internet's a bit slow here, so it's a bit hard. But for example, then what we do is we save it here. So you click here and you have your different lists. So we created start places as places we want to visit. Want to go, it's actually not want to go, it's uh, more uh, uh, places that we've slept at, restaurants, like I've said, and favorites is uh, friends, family, and people we've met. Uh, that's it. Then you can create new lists. We create some different lists, but we don't use them. So for now, we only use these three. You can create new lists from up here. So this is what we do. Each place we find, we save it. And so we got most of all these stars from watching YouTube, documentaries, magazines, books. Uh, yeah, that's all. Or you can even type what I like to do on Google Maps up here is you can type up here things to see and then it'll bring out a lot of red dots on the screen and then you can just see what you like and just, uh, and just uh, save it so that you can go by it. So it's easy for me to see in that way because when I know that, for example, I'm in this area, then there's all these yellow dots. So I click them all again and look at them and I say, oh yeah, these two, three dots, I really wanna check them out. And so that we try to add them on our itinerary. Uh, so it's very easy and visual. I'm gonna do an example then in Canada. So for example, let's say that 
uh, this is map out one second so the green line is a main road the yellow line is also a main road the white lines are smaller roads as you can see and then you have for example these roads here you see which are uh, not dotted lines but they're small uh, cut lines and so these mean off-road not main road and then you have as well another uh, design which are just dots dotted lines and I'm gonna find one for you okay perfect so I found one here so for example see this is the main road so road 138 uh, in uh, in Canada and here you have the dotted line so you know it's a sort of off-road and then here it becomes dots and so this means that now this is a walk this is a walkable path not drivable so for example, let's say that on Google Maps, I was around this area and I wanted to go off-road and find a wild camping spot, then I would find it easily with uh, map out just because I can see all of these dotted areas that it's hard to see on Google Maps because it just looks like forest and it just looks like a pile of trees. If I zoom in, I could see easily there's an off-road here, there's some off-road here of the main road. So then I open Google Maps, I go on satellite mode and now normally the internet's a bit slow, but here normally you see, I do see the roads as well. So it's not too difficult, but sometimes when you're really off-road, you can't see these uh, nicely uh, traced roads. You actually just see patches of forest. So what I do is I find the traces on, um, uh, on map out, and then I just zoom in to these different areas to see if I see any housing. So here I don't see any houses, that's pretty good. And see here, it looks like there's a little patch that I could probably park at. Maybe here as well, look at that. That looks like some area that I could park in. So that's perfect. So that's how I usually find my completely wild camping spots so that we're completely alone. And it's usually off the main road. And it's much easier using this app to see all the different main roads and where they go. And then I'm like, okay, I like this little hook. I find it on Google Maps, that little hook is, I don't know, let's just say it was this part, that's it. And I'll be like, okay, no houses, looks like, huh, looks like there's a little patch I could park at, and that's it. So uh, here, uh, in terms of the apps we use, MapPow, I think it's five or six euros, and then it's for life, and that's how we use Google Maps. Going to the next, whoops, going to the next page here, uh, the only app we use is Google Translate. So if I op open Google Translate, what I like about it is that there's a camera. So I could open the camera, for example, let me open it and see, for example, I could look for a text and I could say, I want to translate it from Finnish to English if I was in Finland. And so this is useful for when you're in front of a board. So a road sign that says a warning, do not cross you or military zone or whatnot in, in a different language, then you can use it. So this is very useful. Uh, in here, there's nothing specific that I use for the trip. These are mostly just uh, bank and phone and health insurance. So nothing specific except for Buddy. Buddy is an app that I share with Mathilde. Here actually you can put all of your expenses and each of us has an account. So Nick, this is me and Mathilde, let's see, here is Mathilde. And so we both can have access to the app on our phones as our own, in our own names, this app is free. And uh, we can easily then put the uh, expenses we've had. We both can put how much money we have on our credit card so that we know uh, if we have made any, if we have forgotten to write an expense or not, and we can easily see how much is left on my card, how much is left on her card. It's not connected to your bank, but it's something manual. And we do this every time we make an expense. So it's you need to get in a habit of it, but once you do it, it's super easy to see the budget. And then here you can easily see, well, for groceries, we still have some budget. Uh, restaurant, we went over budget. Drinks, we still have some. Uh, we went over budget for the car repair, but that's normal because we sent it to Hamburg and we had to do a lot of cleaning and oil changes. And there you go. And then you can sort of um, uh, model this app the way you want it and with the different names you want. There's tons of filters you can add. Uh, let's see what else. TreeCount. TreeCount is a great app as well. It's mostly for groups. Um, we use this when we are with friends. So for example, this is an example one. But uh, see if Alex spends three euros. Oh, let me go back. So for example, if one of us 
pays 85 euros for a hotel, someone else pays 13 euros for a picnic, another person pays 64 for the car. Then you go to balances, and here it shows you who paid what and how much. And so here it tells you who owes who. So Brian owes Alex. So these are sort of reimbursements. So it's very easy to follow who's been uh, purchasing what without having to count uh, by hand or to note it on a piece of paper. And then if everyone has access to the app. If you share it here, you can do share and everyone who has the app can visualize it. So it's very easy. And then here you can add an expense and, uh, and you can see in which who paid for it and whatnot. So that is very easy. In here, we don't use much of these apps except for Canon to send uh, pictures from the camera to the phone. DJI is for the drone. Here, well, these are just uh, normal apps all of us use. Well, Lightroom, we use it to edit our pictures. The rest of these apps we actually don't use. And we have MailChimp, so this is for a newsletter. Uh, so I can easily follow from, uh, from our phone. So we use MailChimp for our newsletter. InShot is what we use to make reels. This one is pay, you pay I think 30 euros per year or 35 euros per year and then you can edit as many videos as you want. So that's great. Since we have YouTube, well, we have also YouTube Studio to be able to follow um, to, to follow sort of uh, the, the back office of our videos. Here, nothing. Uh, here, nothing apart Duolingo. Duolingo is a great app to learn languages. It's a very basic app, but it works very well and it's free. Uh, and in here, yes, in here there's actually multiple apps we use. So Park for Night and iOverlander are very similar. Uh, Park for Night, I think, is more in Europe, and iOverlander is more international. I mean, worldwide. Uh, both of them sort of give you an idea of where you can find a wild camping spot, where you can park your car for free or paid, where it's safe to park. You have comments, you have photos. Uh, it's sort of. Uh, feedback from travelers just like yourselves mostly by vehicle who have uh, tried out a location and sort of give you an idea of if it's a good place if it all went well what's the view what's the comment and so you can easily find uh, water points hotels camping wild camping uh, fuel stations showers things like that so a lot of good information can be on these two apps XE is currency exchange, very useful for when you're traveling around the world and you want to see what is the current currency rate. It's always up to date. Uh, Lingue and Converse are apps we haven't used yet, but we probably will. Uh, instead of Google Translate, where you are translating a text or a photo, here it's you talking to the phone in English or in your language, and it will say it out loud in the language you cho choose. So for example, I can't speak Japanese. If I was to meet a Japanese person, then I would talk to my phone in English and it will translate it into Japanese and then speak it out to my to the person in front of me. So that's quite useful. Uh, we don't use any of, the apps on, any of these apps so far. Uh, Wikiloc is to find off-road uh, hikes, things like that, but so far we haven't used it much. We prefer checking it ourselves. Uh, so again, here not much. We use refill is to find water points, but there's so little online that it's actually not that helpful. We don't use VPNs, uh, well, not yet at least, so I don't think it's useful for now. And I'm missing just here, well, Airbnb, you know it, for finding locations, I mean, rooms or hotels or people's houses to stay at. Booking is similar, Skyscanners for flights, and uh, yeah, the rest you know. So actually, that's, that's it. That's all sort of the apps we use. The one we use really the most, though, is Google Maps and uh, MapOut. Uh, and ways. Those are the ones we use constantly. The rest uh, helps us on our everyday world. All right, so I hope this was useful. Um, if you have any questions, again, you can leave them in the comment section below. I'll try and get back to you uh, or on Instagram directly. Um, we don't use that many apps. Those are just the essential ones. When you're on the road, it's definitely enough. Uh, to edit our videos for YouTube, we actually use Final Cut Pro on the computer. And that's the only thing we use on the computer. It's mostly stocking uh, all the videos and the images. We have hard drives where we put all of the images and videos after we work on the Final Cut Pro directly on the computer. So thank you for watching. Take care and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.